Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. I'm bringing back the real spirit of barbecue. I'm talking about juicy, tender, and cheap delicious meat. In the past, barbecue was all about taking an inexpensive cut, which was normally waste, and then transforming it into something delicious. Over time, that became something of a hype, and the hipsters took it and made it into something expensive. And we want to get back from that. And that's why I have this cheap crap that I'm going to turn into something very delicious. Let's make some barbecue. These are pork scraps, which means these normally get turned into minced pork. For instance, for the 50-50 minced meat. But now we're saving them and we're turning them into something delicious. And can you guess where this comes from? Can you guess? Of course, the ribs. The ribs, bro, that's right. In between the ribs, there's a little bit of meat and that's this. Don't tell anybody about this, otherwise the hipsters will run away with it and turn it into something very expensive. But for now, we got them cheap, all to ourselves. First, I'm making the world famous Tweety barbecue rub. Starting with two tablespoons of salt, half a tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of turmeric, two tablespoons of paprika powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a tablespoon of chili flakes, and a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Mix that up, and that's how you make the Tweety Rub. And the Tweety Rub, of course, is gonna go on the rib fingers, and if you wanna know more about the Tweety Rub, go to our website, pitmasterx.com, and you'll find it right there, the link's down below. Mix it up and make sure that you get a nice coat of all of that beautiful Tweety Rub on each of those rib fingers. We want them to be yellow because these are gonna be the Tweety Rib Fingers. If we throw this in the fryer right now, right now, it would be freaking amazing as well. I'm just saying, you have options. It's not a set thing. You can just throw this in the oven if you're lazy. People with ovens are lazy pit masters. I have an oven. Did you see me use it ever? All right, I think that will do the job. Uh, that's a side note, it's a tip from the pitmaster. Be careful with curcuma, <laughs> especially with clothing. If the mom's watching, don't make this because everything will become yellow. I'm gonna be cooking on the Kamado Joe. This is a ceramic barbecue and it will be perfect to cook our ribs on. And as you can see, I still have a little bit of charcoal left from the last cook. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my hand, work through it, that way I will remove the ash. Now I am ensured that I have sufficient airflow. I will add more charcoal to it. And of course, we're gonna be using the Kamada Joe's Big Block. Just think about what you're gonna cook and how long that's going to take. And I'm estimating that the maximum amount that this is going to take is around four hours, but more likely to be three hours. And then I'm thinking of the charcoal that I'm using. It's a hardwood lump charcoal, and it will take just a little bit of energy to warm up this ceramic barbecue. So I'm not gonna fill it all the way to the top. I just need a small pile at the bottom. And by doing so, I have more control over the temperature with the air vents in comparison with loading it up fully and then just letting it get out of control. A wool fire starter in the center. And I love these the best because they give hardly any smoke. And then I'd like to add just a little bit of charcoal to the sides so it will start a little faster. Now I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes and wait until the fire starter burned down. And then it's time to add some smoke wood. I will be using delicious apple wood to smoke with. It goes straight onto the fire. Then I'm gonna put on the heat deflectors. And now I created the heat shield, put in the grill grates. And now I have an indirect setup, which is perfect for smoking. Oh boy, look at that color. That's gonna be so delicious. That fat's gonna render down, the meat's gonna become tender, everything is gonna be juicy, and it's gonna have an amazing barbecue smoke flavor. Once you got them on, it's time to close the lid and open up the vents. First, I'm gonna open up the bottom vent to about one finger. Then I'm going to open up the top vent to about two stripes open. But with rib fingers, you need a different technique than you would normally use for your ribs. You wanna first go a little faster, get more smoke on, a little bit more heat, render down the fat a little earlier. And that's why I'm gonna aim for 140 degrees Celsius of smoking. While we wait for the rib fingers to be smoked, 
I'm going to show you how to make my latest creation, the Tweedy barbecue sauce. Of course, I'm going to heat up my Scottsburg pan first. Then I'm going to add half a cup of chili sauce, half a cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of rum, a tablespoon of Worcester sauce, a tablespoon of Tweedy barbecue rub. Mix that up. <laughs> Woo! I want to tweet like a bird, but I can't. I don't know how to. That's how I feel right now. Oh yeah. It took about 15 minutes for the barbecue to get up that 140 degrees Celsius. And then I let it run for another half hour. And now the rib fingers look like this. The fat started rendering down. They picked up a lot of smoke. And look at that color. They really have picked up a nice barbecue color. And even though that they look fantastic and they look like you can eat them right now, they're still super tough. So it's time for the next phase of the cook. And the next phase is aluminum oil. Everybody wants this aluminum foil. This is so thick. If you crush your fingers around it like that, you're gonna have a cut. It's absolutely freaking amazing. Loads of people ask me where I get it. This comes from aluminiumfolie.nl. It's not sponsored, but um, this stuff's amazing. It's basically straight, straight from the factory. And I don't get the uh, barbecue version that they offer. I get uh, the industrial grade version, like a little thicker than the food version. I'm gonna load my aluminum foil up with the rib fingers. Then I'm gonna pour on the barbecue sauce and look at that beautiful stuff. I'm gonna save a little bit for later on, so I got something to dunk them in. But now it's time to wrap them up. There we go. Locked it in place. And this package is gonna go back on the barbecue, which is still running at 140 degrees Celsius. And we're going to let this cook until it's fall apart tender. After one and a half hours of waiting, it's time to check on our rib fingers to see if they're done. Open up the package and take a look at that. Whoa, Woo. steaming hot, sizzling. Those look absolutely freaking delicious. But wait, hold on. You can't eat them as they are because if you would bite into these, you're gonna have burn degrees. I got degrees, but burn degrees, you don't want burn degrees. I got, I got all kinds of degrees. <laughs> Still there. And now, time to eat. First, let's take a look at them. See, oh, there we go, already pulled. We got that nice red color on the inside from the smoke. It's nice and glazy, look at that. Fatty, juicy, tender, and nice and sticky on the outside. Got that beautiful Tweety color. Mmm melt in your mouth. This is freaking delicious. Of course, you can find the recipe for all of this on our website, pitmasterx.com. We've written everything down for you in clear instructions so that you know exactly what to do, how to make this, and will not fail. Mm. Recommend. 